Radius. What is it? Why do we use it? Who cares? I care. Radius is not hyaluronic acid dermal filler. It's made of something called calcium hydroxyapatite, which is in the hard structures of the body, like the teeth and the bones. That sounds like something that you would not want to inject into your skin, am I right? But actually it's fine. Radius is not a permanent filler, but it's been around for quite a long time. And back when it was first brought out, it was said that it would last longer than the equivalents of hyaluronic acid fillers at that time. These days we've got Juvederm Volux, for example, which also claim like 18 to 24 months of efficacy, which is the same for Radius. So there's a lot more choice these days in whether or not you would use a hyaluronic acid or calcium hydroxyapatite for the longevity. Radius is not the only calcium hydroxyapatite filler on the market. There are several others. There's also one by Luminera, which was a company I spoke about in a different video, uh, which were recently acquired by Allergan. So it's likely that maybe at some point Allergan will bring out a calcium hydroxyapatite dermal filler. One of the reasons that I do particularly like Radius is because it's very nice for creating crispness along a jawline, for example. If a patient has a problem with water retention following hyaluronic acid treatment, maybe we want to then switch them over to using Radius instead because you don't get the same kind of water retention with it. Something which is perceived as a negative, however, with Radius is that there is no antidote, if you like. So in many countries, there is easily available hyaluronidase enzyme, which breaks down hyaluronic acid. This can be used in an emergency situation, for example, if you've got a blood vessel occlusion, or it can just be used if you have a small bump there, or you know if you just don't like the result that you've got for whatever reason. That same reverser is not available for Radies, although they do have proof of concept that something which is used to break down kidney stones, which are also made of calcium, right, can be injected into an area where there is radius that maybe you want to break down and it will break it down. I saw this presented at a conference once and a doctor there was talking about how she'd actually done it for a patient and the feedback was that it works but that it was really painful, presumably because of the difference in pH. Maybe they could add lidocaine, I don't know. I don't think that there's been a clinical trial on something like this yet, it's just proof of concept. So then what's the key thing that you need to know when you're having radius? I would say only place it in areas that are more safe than others. So for example, in myself, I tend to just use it in the jawline sometimes in the cheekbone, and I pretty much only inject it now with a cannula. You would never, for example, use it in the nose or around the eye or in the lips because you're pretty much asking for trouble there. Radius comes in three different volumes, so you'll have 0 0.3, 0 0.8, and 1.5 mils. I have no idea why they've got such weird numbers. I tend to just use the 1.5 mils. It's also available with and without lidocaine. If you're going to use it without lidocaine, it's really important that lidocaine is added to it before you actually inject it into a patient. Because if you inject it without the lidocaine, it's really painful, it really stings, and it does not stop stinging for ages. It's not like using a hyaluronic acid without lidocaine, which is just kind of a little bit annoying afterwards. This is like, you know, like a fiery sort of injection. But with the lidocaine in, it's fine. You can't feel it, it's totally okay. So if you're going to use it without the lidocaine, we tend to use the lidocaine in between two connectors and go like this in order to mix the product uh, in with the lidocaine properly so that it's fully saturated. However, it's obviously better if you can just use it with the lidocaine added because then you're not gonna have any inconsistencies of the texture. I have also heard of this product being used, for example, in dimples in the buttock, but in a hyperdiluted fashion. So it will be mixed with saline in order to create more of a wash that you can paint very superficially under the skin. I've also heard of people doing that in the neck too. I actually prefer Sculptra for doing that with, but you have to make sure that it's super dilute. 
Although the consistency of it looks kind of grainy, it's actually very smooth when it's in the skin, which is surprising. Would I have Radies injected into myself? Definitely, and in fact, I have done. It's worth noting though, that after you have Radies, you're gonna get more swelling in that immediate period afterwards. Definitely more swelling than with hyaluronic acid. However, the swelling is a lot more short-lived. So if you compare it with something like Juvederm Volux, for example, with the Radies, you'll have maybe a two or three day period where it's very, very stiff and swollen there, but then it will very quickly begin to dissipate off. With the Volux, you can have persistent swelling for weeks afterwards. It's also super cost effective because you're getting 0.5 mils extra, if you like, for not actually that much more money. I'd say that I probably do Radies more on men for the jawline than I do on women, but it's definitely suitable for both. If it's a new patient to me though, I like to do something with hyaluronic acid first in a lot of cases, just to make sure that the patient likes it and that we're both on the same page before we then proceed to using Radies. Okay guys, so that's it for this week. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section below if you've ever had Radies and what did you think? And I will see you again here next week.